Okay, this video is going to be kind of a mod podge on how this day went. And there should be plenty of kid action going on for those of you who have asked for some more kiddo footage. So here this morning I am making some sourdough waffles. And it is the same way that I make the sourdough pancakes. So it's around two cups of the starter, or if you can see here, that I am just dumping my starter out. I know that I had about two to three cups of starter, so I've just went ahead and dumped it all out. I did go ahead and feed it the night before so I can make sure it was the thickness that we like and that it was nice and active because it helps it stay real fluffy and bubbly. But you do not have to use active starter. You can use discard. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of sweetener. We use souk in it. It's seriously the exact same as the pancakes. I just put it in the waffle maker. And then a teaspoon, I have starter on my finger, so I'm trying to keep it off of everything. If you've ever worked with sourdough, then you know that if starter gets anywhere and it dries, it is kind of like dealing with concrete. So I'm trying to keep it off of anything that I touch. But then it was a teaspoon of baking soda, and now I'm going to get some salt. And I just do a little sprinkle of salt. Sometimes I don't do it at all because I completely forget. So if, if you don't do salt, it's not a deal breaker. Just a little sprinkle of salt. And then I'm going to do, uh, the recipe is a teaspoon of vanilla extract, but I like to use the vanilla bean powder. And so I'm only going to use half a teaspoon because the vanilla bean powder is stronger than the vanilla extract. So I kind of eyeballed, I'm still using my teaspoon here, but I eyeballed uh, half a teaspoon. And we got a FedEx package. They love getting the packages. Bryant, even though he does have an office, he has everything shipped to our house still. And so just about every morning we get packages. Our neighbors probably think I'm an online, huge online shopper, but it's really Bryant's stuff. So then we're going to add two eggs. It can be room temperature. It can be out of the refrigerator, whatever you like to do. doesn't really matter. And then on this one, so that is like the base uh, recipe there. But on this one, I did add, because I had some homemade applesauce. So I did add about a tablespoon there of applesauce, a heaping tablespoon of applesauce. And it just added a different flavor to it. Everybody really liked it. So I am, unis you <laughs> I am using a Danish dough whisk to whisk it up. You can use a fork, you can use a spatula, you can use whatever you want, but I use my Danish dough whisk for everything. And you can see here the consistency is starting to get really nice and fluffy, really thick. And so I have my iron all here already nice and hot, so I'm going to pour that on there. And I am not a professional at using my, uh, my waffle maker because it has like a ready light so you can tell when it's ready or not, but I don't know. When the ready light's on, it's always still kind of sticky, not really ready, and so I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not good at my waffle maker. I just lift it up like I did there, and I check it, and if it's not pulling apart, then I take it out. And then Leland and Wyatt like theirs, uh, they say crispy waffles, so I do tend to overcook their waffles because they like them. They like them nice and, nice and crispy, kind of hard. But this one was a softer one, so uh, I'll split this one with Hannah. And I'm going to make Leland's crispy one right now. I'm here in the background. I'm also going to try and get them to eat some scrambled eggs along with it. Sometimes I uh, have a hard time getting them to eat anything else but the waffle, so I do kind of dread when they ask for waffle mornings. But I'm making some pa some pancakes. <laughs> oh gosh, no. I'm making some scrambled eggs, and they do actually end up eating the scrambled eggs. So it was it was a morning that kind of went nice. <laughs> I went ahead and I fed my sourdough, got, got it recharged. I did half flour, half water, and then I'm going to cover it. You always want to cover it with a uh, breathable material and then secure it so you don't get any fruit flies in it. Wyatt's helping me with the laundry. He likes to get everything off of their beds, and then Leland likes to do Anna's bed. Okay, so here I'm going out, going to deal with the chickens, 
and everybody has finally eaten, gotten dressed. We're probably around 10, 10.30 here. And uh, they're going to play around while I can get some chicken duties done. And then we actually, it had been a while since we had some rain and it, we had quite a few warm days. So I am later on here going to work on getting everything nice and watered. Because we had gone probably two weeks or more without rain, and we've been in the 70s and 80s. So everything, even though we're cooler in the evenings, that's why I've been able to go a little longer without watering. But things are starting to dry out, so I do need to get some watering done. And this is when we did watch Remy for Mom and Dad. So no, we did not get a dog, but we're watching Remy for Mom and Dad. And uh, he and Callie were just under the trampoline arguing, so I had to break that up, try and keep him with me. They did really well. My cats do not like dogs at all. They will fight any dog that comes in the yard. But they actually did really well with Remy. As long as I had him by me, Callie would kind of growl, but she was okay. And Baby was actually pretty, pretty good with them, too. And he's the one that really would just chase them off, but... I was really glad that we had an easy time. And I am, yes, you water the green stalks from the very top and let it water itself, but I did plant some seeds in it. And so I wanted to go ahead and make sure I watered each one of those pockets so to make sure that the seeds were nice and wet before they sprouted. Because um, I planted, let me think, I did some beets, radishes, and carrots in the green stalk. And so I wanted to make sure I had those nice and, uh, and wet. Here I'm getting my gourds down. We did have a little frost for two nights. So my vine died off and I'm just trying to collect all the gourds. And we'll see if they dry out properly or not because they weren't quite ready. But we'll see. Okay, so here I am going to make, it's actually my quick bread recipe, my quick sandwich bread recipe, but I am going to be doing hot dog buns because I'm going to do chili dogs for dinner. And so I have two, the two teaspoons of active dry yeast, and then it's supposed to be a tablespoon of honey, but if you can see there, that was very much more than a tablespoon. When I do my hamburger buns or my hot dog buns, I do add more honey than normal because they like them sweeter, kind of like a Hawaiian roll. So I did add quite a bit of honey. That's probably, I would say maybe two tablespoons, probably there. And then one to two tablespoons of butter, probably. And so I'm measuring out. I have my, checking my water here. It was a little warm, but it, it, it was okay. It ended up working. But I warmed up uh, one and one third cup of water. And then I'm going to measure out, well, I'm going to get it stirred up, yes, to go ahead and warm up my yeast, mix in that honey. And I will be measuring out, I do half of the einkorn and half of the all purpose flour. And so I did around two, 245 grams of einkorn and then probably 245 grams of all purpose whenever I do my flour. And I did uh, just grind the einkorn this same morning, so my einkorn was still pretty fresh. And it does, it, it, is, it is a little bit different than if I grind it and had sat in the freezer for a little while. But um, I mean, it's still good, it's just whenever I mix it up, it does tend to be a little more on the, um, the softer side, the sticky side, even though I do add a little bit of flour to it, extra flour to it. it. It will be a little stickier too because of the honey, but because it's fresh, fresh, fresh ground, um, it will need to set after I mix it for quite a while. I think I mix it like 15 to 20 minutes and I will, it will still be sticky. So I take it off and it will be setting. Oh, look, I have uh, my alarm going off right now that I have bread in the oven, but, um, it will be a little sticky and I will set it on the side and it when it's fresh fresh ground it takes that uh, that flour a little more time to soak up the moisture so here it's still kind of sticky to the bowl I'm gonna I added about maybe a teaspoon or two of flour there that is the all-purpose flour that I added and so I'm gonna let it mix just a little bit more 
it is a little so you kind of stick on the stickier side but it's okay I'm going to take it off I'm going to set it to the side I'm going to cover it and during that hour of rising it's all that fresh ground flour is also going to absorb more of that moisture so it does end up firming up a little bit more than uh, when I first take it off of the dough hook okay so while that's rising I am practicing jumping jacks with the boys because they do that at karate and if you can see here Leland's getting better at it but Wyatt was still struggling so <laughs> so we were practicing jumping jacks and Anna thought that she would pitch in and do it too she does give up pretty quick at the, <laughs> in a little bit <laughs> when she realizes she can't do it quite like see right there already gave up <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to form the hot dog buns. And so I fold it over just like I do my sandwich bread. And it's kind of like many versions of a sandwich bread. And so when I get it out of the bowl, I just pinch off a little portion, enough to fill my hand. And then I'm going to fold it over make sure you have nice tension on the top, a good form. So uh, it, that tension will help it keep its form while it's rising. And so I just form like basically little, the way I, same way I do my sandwich bread, just little mini versions. And then it ends up coming out like hot dog buns. And honestly, on this day, like y'all are probably like, ooh, I can't wait to see what this looks like. I do forget <laughs> to video everything put together. Them coming out the oven, the um, hot dog buns being put together with the chili. Like I forget to do all of that. So I'm sorry, but this is the process. Okay, so here I have a pound of ground meat, and I'm adding a little bit of salt. I just sprinkle salt enough to cover it. I don't know how much that would technically be. And then I'm adding some garlic powder here. You can use fresh garlic, whatever you like. Um, my kids don't like to see garlic, so I do garlic powder. A little bit of chili powder. I'm trying to think what all I ended up doing, but we will find out together. Oh, some cumin. I was running out. I needed to refill my container. I do have, I buy it in bulk from Azure Standard, and so I do have a big jar of it. I just need to refill my little one. And this is onion powder. And I'm going to go ahead and get all that mixed up really good while it's on medium heat. Get it all browned up and mixed up real good together. Okay, now I am going to put those hot dog buns in the oven at 350 degrees and I bake them for between 15 and 20 minutes. Some, I don't know, some days it's a little different. So I do, I start with 15 and I check it and kind of watch it and sometimes I have to go up to, to 20 but I think I'm pretty sure on this day I just stuck with the 15. Okay, I added some black beans there that I had uh, pre-cooked and froze like several months ago. I had soaked and cooked some black beans and I had way too much. So I ended up just jarring some and, and putting them in the freezer. So this is some fermented peppers, all the peppers that we had left in the garden before we got this little frost that we had. And so I collected those and I chopped them all up, seasoned everything, and uh, I stuck them in a jar to ferment. And so I like to add a little bit of those whenever we have anything that's chili wise or taco wise um, even nachos I like to add those so they're really good they were all very very spicy peppers especially keeping the seeds in but when you ferment it it actually makes them more mild so I was able to get away with putting that in the food and the boys didn't complain about it so I normally add some ketchup well I was completely out of ketchup so what I did was I got a small can of um, tomato paste and normally I would mix that in and then add a little bit of souk in it to add some sweetness. But I ended up not adding souk in it on this day because when I tasted it, you'll see I did double dip when I tasted it, okay? But, I mean, it was just feeding my family. They'll be fine. I wasn't sick or anything. But when I tasted it, it was actually really, really, really good. I don't know if it was those, um, those fermented peppers that had some kind of sweetness to them or change the flavor or something but I did not add any of the souk in it I thought it was really 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 good and everybody ate all of it hope y'all enjoyed the video and seeing the kids a little bit and we will see y'all on the next video